Hello and a very warm welcome to World This Week by Latest Laws. This is our weekly program, so subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified. My name is Monica Rahar and let's get started by having a look at Supreme Court this week. The Honorable Apex Court has modified its earlier order which was passed on Thursday and by virtue of this new order, the court has stated that the Tamil Nadu governor shall decide within a period of one week on the remission plea of A.G. Pirarivalun, who is serving as a life convict in the Rajiv Gandhi assassination case. This period of one week has substituted a period of four weeks in the earlier order. The top court has dismissed a batch of review petitions which have challenged the judgment of constitution bench in the Aadhaar case by a majority of 4 is to 1. It was held that no case for review was made out and that change in the law or subsequent decision or judgment of a coordinate or larger bench by itself cannot be a ground for regarding the review petition. Now, Justice uh, D.Y. Chandrachud, he wrote the dissenting opinion and he dissented from the majority on the ground that it was a constitutional error to hold at this stage, that no ground existed for review and also that review petition should be kept pending until the larger bench decides a question which was referred to it in the Roger Matthew case. The court has issued notice to all 25 high courts of the country for not implementing the online RTI facility even after 15 years of the introduction of Right to Information Act. In the case of Ashok Kumar versus State of Jammu and Kashmir, the Supreme Court has reiterated that prescription of higher educational qualifications as a qualification for promotion to a post cannot be held to be violative of Article 14 and 16 of the Indian Constitution. While upholding a decision of the NGT in the case of Himachal Pradesh Bus Stand Management and Development Authority versus the Central Empowered Committee, the Supreme Court has directed that a hotel come restaurant on forest land in Himachal Pradesh should be demolished because the same was structured or constructed on the land by illegal means. In the case of Irio Grace Realtek Private Limited versus Abhishek Khanna and others, the court has held that developers cannot push the apartment buyers to be in one-sided and unreasonable contract or agreement and if they do so, then it will be considered as an unfair practice in terms of Section 2, Subsection 1 and Clause R of the Consumer Protection Act. Actor Sonu Sood has moved the top court a day after the Bombay High Court rejected a petition against a Mumbai civic body notice alleging repeated illegal construction at a building which is owned by the actor in the city's Juhu neighborhood. Now let's proceed to the next segment of our news analysis and have a look at the Delhi High Court this week. Earlier this week, the Delhi High Court sought the response of the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology and also that of the Central Public Information Commission officers of its various departments on a plea seeking details of the Arogya Setu mobile application. In response to a plea by a Hollywood producer alleging copyright violations, the court refused to stay the release of the film called The White Tiger on the OTT platform Netflix. Now in the next segment, let's have a look at the Bombay High Court this week. The Bombay High Court has granted three weeks transit anticipatory bail to three persons, two of them being the director and writers of the web series called Tandav who are Ali Abbas Zafar and Gaurav Solanki and the third person being the content head of Amazon, Aparna Purohit, in response to an FIR which was registered against them for allegedly hurting religious sentiments and portraying police poorly in their web series which is Tandav. The UP police came to Mumbai to investigate the case based on an FIR registered there. Meanwhile, an FIR was also registered against the series in Mumbai. Now let's proceed to the Allahabad High Court and have a look at a very significant decision which has come from there. Now before I proceed with the decision, I'd like to give you an overview of the matter involved here. So there is a statute called the Special Marriages Act which was made for facilitating interfaith marriages and it required the couples who are intending to solemnize their marriage, marriage in this particular statute to issue a notice of 30 days to the public at large and this notice was aimed to raise 
objections if any like a claim of bigamy by the public now there was a fallacy here because this was a major concern for many couples now we also know that this is a sad reality of our nation that interfaith marriages they are often frowned upon so this notice it virtually meant informing the parents and the community of these couples about their intention of getting married and it often resulted in a harm to their life and liberty and hence people resorted to changing their religion first and then performing their marriage under the personal laws so now in this background let's understand the decision of the court so the lucknow bench of the allahabad high court in the case which was titled as shrimati safia pande and nada versus the state of up has held that the requirement of publication of notice of intended marriage under section 6 an invitation of objections and the entertaining of the same under section 7 of the special marriage act it is not mandatory it was further held that making such publication mandatory would invade the fundamental right of liberty and privacy including within its spheres the freedom to choose a partner to a marriage without any interference whatsoever coming from either the state or the non state entities like the parents of the persons concerned Now let's proceed with the miscellaneous segment of our news analysis. The center is cited hearing in the apex court and also before various high courts with respect to the three farm bills and also the Niti Aayog council not having studied a report on amendments to the essential commodities acts as reasons to deny information on these bills to separate RTI applications filed by various activists. The Competition Commission of India has held that Haryana Urban Development Authority it is an enterprise under section 2H of the Competition Commission Act of 2002 and thus it cannot be questioned on account of abuse of its dominant position. A metropolitan court in Mumbai has directed a complainant who had sought a sedition case against actor Kangana Ranaut to show whether he had taken required sanction from the government for the same. A Delhi court has convicted Aam Aadmi Party MLA named Somnath Bharti for assaulting AIM security staff in a case registered in the year 2016. Next we have an update in the Vyapam scam. So a CBI court in Indore on Friday sentenced a doctor to 5 years imprisonment and also a fine of rupees 1000 in this particular matter. Now let's proceed with the last segment of our news analysis which is the international news. Vijay Mallya has appealed to the UK Home Secretary Preeti Patel for another route to remain in the United Kingdom. A Japanese court has upheld a ban on dual citizenship rejecting a suit that challenged the measure of uh, banning the dual citizenship and its constitutionality and sought damages for those affected. In a blow for the policies of Donald Trump in limiting immigration into the US, the US President Joe Biden has ended the Muslim travel ban which blocked travel to the United States from several predominantly Muslim and African countries. He has also announced that the United States plans to re-enter the Paris Climate Accord, the landmark international agreement which was signed in the year 2015 to limit global warming. That's all we have for this week. The link of all these news updates are made available in the description section for your kind consideration. Thank you for being with us.